Hello and uh, welcome to today's video session. In today's class I'm going to teach you how to take your existing Access Database application and bring it online. As you can imagine, uh, as powerful as Access is, uh, one of the biggest challenges is bringing this data to the web. And if you're running a business and want to stay competitive, ideally it would be nice if we can log in uh, maybe using a mobile device such as an iPhone or an iPad and be able to access the data online and all of our forms and all of the reports that we have in a locally stored access database. So that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. Uh, we're going to be using a company called Caspio. Caspio is a, a database application framework that allows technical and non-technical users uh, the ability to quickly build applications, forms, reports, table foundations, all of the relationships and within just a couple of days maybe even a couple of hours uh, you can rebuild all of your necessary functionality to have all of the workflows available to you online. To build our front end which is all of our navigation links and content we're going to be using Weebly. Weebly just like Caspio is an easy way to build a website. So if you've never built a website in the past Weebly makes it very, very easy to create all of your pages, your logo, your navigation menus. That way you can be up and running with your website in literally just a couple of minutes, depending on how much content you wish to put onto your website. Let me show you my Access application first. That way you understand the schema and what exactly we're going to be recreating today. So my Access application is a very simple app. It's to manage customer orders. We have a couple of tables, we have a couple of forms, some queries, and also one of the reports that I have created. Now in this existing Access application, I have a list of all of my customers. I have a table that lists all of my products that we're selling. I also have an order table that's going to store all of the orders pertaining to our customers. As you can see, I have a primary key here, customer ID. I have a product ID, also as a primary key and my order table is simply going to stamp those IDs inside it along with creating a new primary key for each one of the orders. I'm also storing date submitted or date ordered, quantity, status, which is going to be pulling the information from my status lookup table, and here are my two lookup tables. I have category, what uh, category our products fall under. We have the status, so we can say if the order is new, cancel, shipped, or in progress. I have a simple query created here which is a combination of three tables, customers, products, and orders. And I'm basically merging those three tables together so that I can see all the data that I wish to see inside this query. And I have three forms. I have an input form to add new customer. I have the order form so that I can submit an order for each one of the customers. And all I'm doing here is creating a simple drop down that looks, looks into my customer table and I stamp the customer ID in the order table. Same thing with the product ID. And then we have date ordered, quantity, and of course we have the status that looks into our lookup table for status. I also have a form that adds new product to the products table. So if we're selling a new item, we can just create that product here. And last but not least, I have my relationship set up just so that you, you guys can understand the structure and the foundation on how this is related. So we have the orders table that links back into the customer table so customer can have many orders. I have the products table and then we have the two simple lookup tables that link into my products table and also our orders table. Now let me quickly show you a live example because I have already replicated this application via the web. I want you to see the comparison between the Access application that I have on my local computer and what it's going to look like when it's finally completed. So here is my live example. This is my Weebly website and all of the forms and reports that you're about to see were built using the Caspio platform. So let's start with the new customer form. So as you can see, this is my new customer form. It's very similar to my local access form that I have. So if I open up my application again and I go to add new customer, you can see the same labels and same fields. The difference is that this form is sitting on my computer, whereas this form 
is on the web and we can interact with that form as long as we have access to this URL. I also have the ability to add new product which is just like the form that we have in Access Database. I can select my category using this drop down. If I go back to my Access application, add new product, you can see that I can select my category lookup. I can also manage customers so I created a report that allows me to search and filter my customers based on some criteria and then when I click search I am able to see my results of all the customers from within the database. Here I can actually have some editing options to be able to edit my data. For example, Grid Edit allows me to access each cell and make modifications. I can also perform a mass update so if I select a couple of records here and click on edit I can now change the particular field that I want to um, have the mass update on. I can also go to details here of a specific record and drill into details if I only want to edit these fields for that specific item. Here is my new order form which looks just like my access form so I can select my customer, I can select my product, I can say date ordered, quantity and also the order status. Now I've also created two additional reports that I don't have in my Access database. Caspio allows you to create uh, very, very robust reports uh, so that you can visualize and see the metrics on your data uh, so you can run some comparisons and, and analyze what you have. So let's take a look at my report that shows view orders. Again, I have the ability to search. And what I'm doing on the results page here is I'm grouping my data based on month. I have all of the customer information, I have the product that the customer bought, the quantity, the cost for that specific product, and then we're doing a very simple calculation here to take the cost times the quantity to give me the total. I also have the grand total at the bottom, so it tallies up the sum of all of my totals here on the right hand side. So it's a nice report that gives me an idea. Uh, what kind of sales we're making for a given month and then I also have a grand total at the bottom so that we can see the performance of revenue and how we're doing in terms of sales. Okay, My second report that I have is a pivot table and I created this report um, to generate uh, the revenue in terms of what product is bringing in the most, uh, the most revenue. So we have the products here on the left hand side, we have the months on the top, and then for example this Dell computer I can see that we didn't make any sales in March and April but however we had a big sale for the month of May. Same applies to all the other products that we have. We have a grand total here at the bottom for each month and of course we have the grand to total here across the aggregate of all of our figures here in the middle. So this pivot table is very easy to build in Caspio. It takes just a few minutes and you would normally build it just like you would in Excel or uh, some other similar platform that you have and I will be showing you all of that in today's class. Okay, so let's go ahead and log into our Caspio account now and let me show you how we can quickly put together this application that we have in Access and bring it to the web. Once you're logged inside your Caspio account, you will be taken to the home page of your Caspio Bridge platform. This is where you're going to be able to see uh, the list of all of the applications that you have built as long as you have had your Caspio account. Now Caspio is a, uh, an enterprise platform that allows you to build multiple applications for different departments, different clients, if eventually you want to become a reseller. So there is a lot of uh, ways that you can leverage the Caspio platform and once you're logged inside your account, and in this example I'm using a Caspio 14 day trial account, you're going to be able to see a sample application that you can explore but if you're ready to build your own application, you can simply click on the new app link here at the top. And from here you have two options on how you can begin. You can start by importing data. If you have some data in your Access database, Excel spreadsheets, XML, or text. However, if you just want to build the application from scratch, if you're not importing any data, you can begin by building a blank application. Now in our example we have an Access Database application so we're going to import the data 
and the structure into Caspio so we can save on time from having to rebuild all of the tables and all of the relationships. And this is a very uh, common misconception. Uh, people usually tend to think that you can import your entire access database, including the forms and reports, and that's not the case. However, you can import your tables, your data, and all of the relationships, and that's going to save you a tremendous amount of time uh, when it comes to building all the functionality later on. Uh, once you have the tables and the foundation imported, then it's very easy to build your forms and reports and eventually embed them into a web page. Now let me show you how we can import our tables and data. So we're going to begin this way. And let's give our application a name. We're going to simply call it Manage Customer Orders. And let's locate the file on our computer. So I have my Access Database file saved on my desktop. Here it is. I'm going to hit next and you'll notice what's happening behind the scenes. Caspio is creating the application container and it's in the midst of uploading that data file. So let's click on next and you can go ahead and remove this file. This is simply a copy, a backup copy of your customer table. Here are all the tables that we wish to import from our access database. And what you want to do under the action column is you want to import as create new because that's going to allow you to create a brand new database table in your Caspio account. If you already have these tables imported, you can use a different action here to replace an existing table to append new data. So if you're making changes offline in your local access application and you simply want to append or attach those new records to your table, you can use the append action. And then we also have update design if you're simply just adding new columns to your table. So let's keep the names as is and we're going to hit next. And on the second screen before we finally import our file, you can toggle back and forth between your tables. Here's our master table that contains all of the customers and you can see that Caspi is going to show you a sample of your data set and for each table you're going to be able to see the original field name. You can modify the field name if you'd like to rename it to something else. Here you also have the ability to include or exclude which column from that table you wish to import. And finally, you can change the data type of each one of your fields from any one of these options that we have. Now, Caspio is usually smart enough to recognize this for you automatically. But from time to time, you might have to make some manual changes here and click on import. And don't worry if you miss a step here. Even if you forgot to change, let's say, the last name to a specific data type, you can always make these changes even after you import the file. Okay, so after you've gone through each one of your tables, just to verify that everything is correct, you're going to click on import. And this should only take a few seconds. We don't have very many records inside our database. All right, so you can see that all of the tables were imported successfully. We're going to close this screen now. And this is going to take me directly into the framework to see all the objects here on the left-hand side for this specific application called Manage Customer Orders. The way I got to this screen, if I go back to the home page where I see the list of all of my applications, all you have to do is simply click on Open for this app and then you're going to be able to see those objects again. Now the overview screen is mostly informational. This is for you to keep track of your progress and to store all of your notes just so that you can make sure you're on the right track and you're progressing correctly by adding your notes and what you need to build next in terms of the functionality. For example, I can add a quick note here to say, okay, we can save that note and then we can keep adding notes again on the overview screen. Now to view the tables that were imported from Access, you're going to go to the tables object. And here you're going to be able to find all five of those imported tables. Now you can access each table either by clicking on open to view the data sheet mode or if you'd like to modify the fields and the data types, you can click on design. So let's take a look at my customer table and right away you're going to be able to see all of that data. Now if you wish to modify the fields, you can go to table design 
and from here you can introduce new fields, you can remove fields, you can rename fields to something else, and of course you have the ability to change the data type once your data is imported. Let's go back to the tables menu, and I want to show you the screen called relationships. This, just like in Access Database, we can click on this link here, and I can include all of my tables, just like in Access, Let's include all the tables in our view. And from here, all you have to do is just rearrange the tables so that you can see the schema and the foundation according to your own preference. I'm going to try to match this almost exactly like I have it in my Access application. So I'm going to move my orders table in the middle. Let's put the products table here. Then I'll move the customers table up here. The order status was down here. And then I have the category lookup which I'm going to move right over here. So let me just rearrange this a little bit more just so that you can see a better visual. And now in my Caspio application I can see the same exact foundation and structure of all of my tables that way I understand what's linked to what and this gives me a really nice view of all of my relationships. If I compare this with my Access application that I currently have here is my relationship screen. You can see the same exact thing here that I have in my Access application. Let's go back to Caspio. And now what I'm going to show you next is now that we have all of our data imported and all of the tables, let's take a look and see how easy it is to recreate those forms and reports and we can be up and running with this application in just a matter of minutes. Let's begin by building a simple input form that allows us to add new customers into the customers table. To build all of your forms and all of your reports that you will need for the functionality in the workflows, you will need to go to the data pages object. Data pages is a Caspio term. I also like to call them widgets because once you build them, Caspio is going to provide a snippet of code that you're going to copy and paste into your own website builder. It's just like embedding a YouTube video or one of those Facebook like buttons that you see almost on every website. And you will see in just a few minutes how we can build a form and embed it into our Weebly website. So to build a new data page, all you have to do is click on this link at the top. And this is going to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. By default, the submission form is always going to be highlighted every time you launch the data page wizard. But here you have the ability to select and create from various types of application interfaces that you will need for your own project. So in this case, I need to build a submission form. So I'm going to select that data page type. I'm going to click on Next. And using this data source dropdown, this is how you're going to link your table to the data page that you're creating. Okay, so again, we want to build a form that inputs data into the customer table so that my customer's table then needs to be my data source. Let's give this data page a name. Let's call it Add New Customer. From here, you can apply a different style. This is for the aesthetics, the look and feel of your form. So if you wanted to change the color of the labels, the color of the fields, you can easily go to the styles object and make those modifications if you need to match the look and feel of your brand. The localization allows you to change the language and the regional settings of all of your data pages. For now, let's go ahead and click Next. And here are all of your database table fields from that customer's table. So let's include them all into our form by clicking on the double arrow. Hit Next one more time. And then once you reach the screen, configure its properties. This means that you can select each field on the left hand side and you can make modifications on the right side. Okay, so now if I go to first name, if I would like to make that field required, I will simply click on this checkbox. And now you cannot submit the form without first filling in that field. If you want to see what this form looks like at this point, you can preview. And this is going to give you a good idea what the form looks like at this point. If you wish to make this field a timestamp, so the user doesn't actually see this pop-up, we can go back to the wizard, select the date and time field, and using the form element drop-down, 
you have a plethora of ways on how you can modify each one of your fields. So I can turn this field into a radio button, checkbox, drop down, but I have also a special element here called timestamp. It's automatically going to make that field hidden, but in the table, it's going to stamp the date and time of the submission. So we can preview again and you're going to be able to see that we no longer see that date and time field. Now you can further customize the fields if you'd like, but to speed up on time, I am simply going to click finish to save all of my changes. And here is your very first form. And in literally just a few minutes, we were able to recreate this form by pointing and clicking and making a few adjustments and finally clicking on finish. To embed this form into our website now, you're going to see a link called Deploy. The first thing you're going to do is enable access, and Caspio is going to give you five deployment methods. This is the most popular method, the embed model. All you have to do is copy this snippet of code and paste that code into your site builder, and then you're going to see that form embed into your website. Now I'm using Weebly. I am already logged inside my account, and I'm going to show you how you can navigate Weebly a little bit, that way you have a, a quick start and a quick jump start on how you can build your website. The first thing you're going to do is choose a theme for your website on how you want things to be laid out. Then you're going to create all of your different pages. These are all the different pages that I created for my application. And using the Build tab, you can now insert all of these little widgets into the Canvas screen to lay things out and position where you want the content to be on your website. Now I want to access my new customer page, so I'm going to click on that link and I'm going to drag over the embed code into my canvas and by simply double clicking on it I can now paste my Caspio code and if you would like to see what this looks like on your website all you have to do is click on publish now and then Weebly is going to generate this URL for you. And notice that my Weebly account is a free account that I have, which includes .weebly.com subdomain. If you wish to remove the .weebly, then you can purchase Weebly for a monthly fee, and then you can have your own custom domain URL. But a nice thing about Weebly is they give you a free account if you wish to choose to have their branding here in the URL. So let's click on the link now. And let's go to that page, and you're going to see now how that form is seamlessly embedded in your own website. And from here, we just have to complete our application by adding and creating all of the other data pages and simply embedding them into the rest of our Weebly web pages. All right, so let's go back to Caspio now. Let's close this screen now that I have my form embedded. And let's go ahead and now create our second form to add new product. Okay, just to give you a, an example of what I mean by that, we want to create a form that allows me to add new product. So then in Caspio, we're going to click on New Data Page to launch the wizard again. We're going to select Submission Form because, again, the submission form inputs data into our tables. Hit Next. From the Data Source menu, we're going to select our Products table and let's give this a name, Add New Product. We're going to keep the same style and same localization. Hit Next. I want all of my fields in my form. Hit Next one more time. And from here, what we can do is simply just uh, modify the fields just like we did with the submission form to add new customer. Uh, let's see if I want to make any changes here. I do have a category lookup table so instead of this being a text field, if I preview, you can see that it's a text field. However, I want to turn this into a nice dropdown. So then instead of a text field, I'm going to simply select dropdown. And you can either add your own custom values here, or you can simply just look up a table. And if you see here, I have my category lookup table that I can select. Now what I want to list here is simply my category so I can view the actual category, not the category ID. Okay. For my description field, right now it looks like a text field for description, but we can turn this into a nice text area. So instead of text field, let's 
change that to a text area and then you have the ability to change the width and height according to your own preference if you need to see a bigger text area. Now if you're done here, if you want to uh, save your changes, once again click finish and before I deploy it, if I want to preview it, I will just simply click on preview again and now I can look up my category and I have this nice text area that allows the users to add and see more characters as they're typing it. Let's close a few of these preview screens and we're going to hit deploy again next to our add new product form enable access and once again we're going to grab the code and copy it and in my Weebly website builder I'm going to access that web page I'm going to drag over the embed code and really quickly just paste my code save my changes publish and let's see what we have so far so now I have the ability to add new customer using this web form and I also have the ability to add new product using this form and once again we can select our category, we have the description, we can add the product name and also the cost for each product. So hopefully you can see here right away how quickly Caspio allows us to build these forms. So if you're worried about having to recreate these forms in Caspio, uh, don't be too concerned about that because Caspio's point and click wizard allows you to uh, build these uh, forms and reports very very quickly. Okay. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how you can build a report that allows you to manage your customers. Okay, so let's go back to our Caspio account and let's set up our third data page by clicking on the new link again. And this time, I don't wish to input data into my table. Okay, we have two forms, one that inputs new customers and one that inputs the products. This time, I want to build a report that allows me to view my data from my tables. And Caspio is going to give you a couple of different layout and options that you can select from, including the pivot table here, which we're going to be building in a couple of minutes later in the video. For now, I simply want a tabular format here. And if you look at the illustration below, this is basically what you're building. Okay, just use this as a reference so you have a better idea and better visual on what exactly you're building using this data page type. So as you can see I'm building a search form, the ability to view my records as a tabular format and the ability to drill into details. So let's click next here. Once again we're going to select our data source and I want to pull the data from my customers table because that's where all the information is inside the customers table. Let's give this data page a name. We're going to call it view manage customers. Once again, we're going to keep the same style and same localization. Hit next. Let's create a search form that allows the users to search based on some criteria. Hit next one more time. And now what fields do you wish to use in the search form? So let's search based on first name, last name, phone, and email. Okay, these are going to be my search fields. Of course, you can include as many as you want. That's completely up to you. But just to speed up on time, I'm going to have four fields. I'm going to hit next. And on this screen, now you can configure properties of each one of your search fields. By default, every single field is going to be set up as a text field with comparison type equal. I like to use contains as opposed to equal. Because if you leave it as equal, that means you have to know the exact first name of the person that you're searching for. But if you put it as contains, it's more like a partial keyword type search. So if you type in a letter, it's going to return all the results that contain that letter. Now, of course, you have the ability here to change this uh, form element into a different uh, type of uh, search form or search field. So you can turn this into a drop down, list box. We have some cascading options as well. But for simplicity, we're going to keep everything as contains. Now if you want to uh, set up a more complex search form by uh, creating AND or OR logical operators, you can go to the Logic tab here and you can fully customize how you want to search your results. So if you wanted to search based on the first and last name or phone number and email, you can configure by dragging these elements into your Canvas screen and you can fully configure your own schema in terms of the search form. Okay. 
So let's hit next now. And now what fields do you wish to use in the results page? So after we click search, I want to see the first name, last name, phone, email, and maybe a few other fields pertaining to my customers. The rest of these fields, we can include these in the details view. Let's hit next one more time. And here, do we want to have the ability to edit data on the website? And this screen allows you to, uh, to make those changes. So let's have inline edit. This is just a precaution, you know, just to be careful on who you're allowing to edit the data on the web. So let's hit OK. Create edit and bulk edit, inline delete. In fact, we're going to enable all of these options so that you can see what this looks like on the website. I'm not going to make any changes to my results page, although you have the ability here and flexibility to do so. I'm not going to make any changes to my bulk edit fields. I'm going to keep them all text fields. Let's show 25 records per page. Let's enable the details view. And finally, on the details view, let's include all of our fields. And on the configuration screen, you now have the ability to keep all of the details page fields as display only. In other words, read only. The users can't make any updates. Or you can simply just change from display only to any one of the four elements that Caspio provides. So let's just say for the first and last name, we're going to turn those into text fields. The rest of these fields, we're going to keep them as display only. Click finish to save your changes. And in just a couple of minutes, we have built a nice searchable report. So let's go ahead and deploy this now. Enable access, grab the Caspio code once again, go to your Weebly website, and let's go to our Manage Customers page, drag over the embed code, and just like before, we're just simply going to paste our Caspio snippet, publish our website, and I can probably close a few of these screens here. Let me just close this. And now we have the ability to add new customer, we have the ability to add new product, and we also have the ability now to manage our customers. So here are all of my search fields. I can click search, and this is going to show me all of my results that we wanted to display on the results page. As you can see, we have some editing capability here, so I can enable grid edit. I can access each one of my cells to make changes. I can exit grid edit. I can do a multi-select to do a mass update. And we also have the ability to go to details to make our changes. And the only ones that I've enabled so far are the first and last name. Now the beautiful thing about Caspio is that once you paste that code into your site builder, you never really have to paste it again if you're making changes to your report. So let's just say, for example, I wanted the phone number field to be editable as well. Right now it's display only. I'm going to go to my report and click edit. Now you can either click next if you know where you're going, or if you click on the double arrow, you can quickly go to the configuration screen for the details page fields, so that you don't have to hit next every single time. And here's my phone number field. It's currently display only. I'm going to change that into a text field, save my changes, and you don't have to redeploy the code again. All you have to do now is just refresh your website and you're going to be able to see those changes reflect automatically on your website as well. So this is how quickly and easily you can put together your application using Caspio without having to code anything. In Caspio, it's just point and click using the data page wizard. All right, so let's continue building our application. The next thing that I want to do is build a uh, new order form so that we can submit new entries into our table of orders. So let's go back to our Caspio account and click on new data page. And if you've guessed this correctly, uh, kudos to you. You would need a submission form here because we're going to be submitting new orders into our orders table. We're going to go ahead and select our orders table because that's where we want the data to go. And let's give this data page a name. We'll call it new order form. Once again, we'll keep the style and localization the same. Click next. 
And in this case, I need all of my fields in my form. Hit next one more time. Here is my customer ID field. Okay, so for what I want to do here is I actually want to create some kind of a lookup where I can see the customer's name. But in my orders table, I want to stamp that as the customer ID itself. Okay, so I'm going to turn this into a drop down. And I'm going to use either the lookup table, if you select both, this is going to this is going to give you custom values and lookup table. So let's select both here. And the first option that I would like to see is select customer. Make sure you delete the value because you don't want this to be stored in your table. Now the lookup table is we're going to select our customers table. I want to display the customer's last name and based on the last name I want to store the customer ID in my orders table. Now this is only showing me one particular attribute to my customer. It's only showing me the last name. However, you can have multiple fields here so you do a cascading drop down. So based on the last name you can select the first name and then based on the first name you can select the company name and that's still going to give you the same effect where you stamp the customer ID in the orders table. We're going to set up the same thing for our product ID. So we're going to turn this into a drop down. Both. And I'll just say select product, delete the value, and in the lookup table we're going to go into our products table, select the product name, and automatically stamp the product ID in the orders table. Date ordered, let's have a nice calendar pop-up. Quantity is going to be my text field and order status. This is going to be a lookup table. So once again, we're going to select drop down. We're going to do a lookup table and we have a order status lookup table that I can select from really quickly. When done, click on finish. And here is our fourth data page. Let's deploy it by grabbing the code once again. And inside our Weebly Builder, we're going to access our new order page, drag the embed code. So I'm just repeating the same steps as before. We're going to paste the Caspio code, publish our website, and let's go ahead and take a look and see all the stuff that we have so far. I will delete this. Okay, so let's go directly to that page. And now you can see that I can select my customer. I can select my product and I have the ability to set the status of that order, select the date and the quantity ordered. Okay. By the way, the field that you see for order ID, you can turn this into an auto number. It doesn't have to be visible here on the form. Same thing applies to our new customer form. Notice how I'm exposing the customer ID. You can hide this and turn this into an auto, auto number or some kind of a a random ID that way you don't actually have to fill that in yourself manually it automatically generates that ID by changing the data type in the table you can accomplish that but I chose to keep them open just so that you guys can see uh, how you can manually add the customer ID along with product ID and also the order ID now in this case what's gonna happen if I select order ID let's say 10 and if I select my customer and I select this Dell i7 computer. We'll input the date submitted, quantity let's say 30, and we'll say this is a new order and hit submit. Once the form is submitted, if you end up going to your <clears throat> table of all the orders now, you are going to be able to see that latest order inside that table. Okay, so here's the quantity 30. We're stamping the customer's ID, we're stamping the product ID. Okay, and I have the status set to new. So this is the latest entry in my database table. Okay, let's go back to data pages. And what I want to build next is the ability to search and view the history of all of the orders. So let's go back to our data page wizard, click on new. And this time we're going to select the report once again. And I want the tabular format. We're going to hit next. And before I can actually build this, I'm actually one step ahead here. Before I can build this report, I need to be able to uh, create a query that shows me the information from three of those tables. That way it allows me to build my report based on that query. Because if I choose to build this report based on the orders table, 
the orders table is just storing the IDs inside it. So that's not really going to be very useful for me. So let's go ahead and cancel for now. And to build a query in Caspio, in the Caspio platform, they're called views. And views allow you to filter data from your tables and also to join tables together using common values. So let's go to views and click on new. And this relationship name, let's give it a name, we'll call it uh, customer orders view. And the three tables that I want to merge together are my customers table, the orders table, and the products table. These are the three tables that I would like to link together so that I can have that query. Let's hit next. And then Caspio automatically puts this together for you if you have created all of your relationships correctly and in the relationships screen where you see the visual schema if you've configured all of the one-to-manys and one-to-one relationships Caspi is automatically going to make this join for you and in this case it's an inner join between these three tables okay we have the customer ID from the orders and customers table and we have the product ID from the orders table to the products table let's hit next and it's going to show you all the fields from all three tables here. Hit finish. And this query or this view now is going to show me information from all three of those tables. Okay, so it's an inner join. It only shows me the matching records. Okay. And now that I have my view built, I can go back and build my report by clicking on new. Go to reports hit next and now instead of linking my data source table I'm going to link my data source view that I just created and let's give this a name we're gonna call this view history of all prior orders again keep the same style same localization hit next let's have a search form and let's search based on first name and last name only but of course, like I said before, you can search on any one of the fields that you'd like. And of course, from here, you can now choose from all three tables if you'd like to have the criteria from all three of those tables. Just like before, you can modify the uh, comparison type. And I'm going to set this to equal for both first and last name. Hit next one more time. And now, what information do we want to show on the results page? So now you can. Uh, get creative here on what you want to see so we're gonna have the date of the order first as soon as I can find it okay there it is I want the customers name maybe phone number I want the product title or the product name I also want the cost of the product and I think I want the quantity as well so let's include that too under the orders how many uh, a specific item each customer ordered and I think that's all the information that I want to show let's click on next hit next one more time and let's enable some grouping here so let's group based on the date field so we're going to enable this checkbox and let's do a date roll up based on month so it shows me all of the um, grouping based on the month so that we can see all of the sales. Now in Caspio here when you get to the results page you can do some fancy things with calculations. I'm going to use this insert button to insert a calculated field and let's move that all the way down and let's call this, let's give it a label of total and inside the screen you can actually get really really complex calculations put in here um, in order to perform complex calculations. Uh, I'm going to do a very simple one for you today so that you can see by inserting my field quantity times the cost of the product I'm going to format this column in currency so that we can see a nice dollar symbol. Of course, you can change that to uh, to a different one depending on the regional settings. Hit OK. And I also want to insert totals and aggregation so at the very bottom of my report, I can see the totals. So let's insert totals and aggregation. And I want to do that calculation based on the total column that I just created. So we're going to move that to the right. And we're going to apply the sum 
function so that we can see the total. I also want to see the sum for every single month so we're going to go to the advanced tab and from here we can enable group level aggregation. Okay, So let's see, take a look at the options here that we have and we're going to position uh, the aggregation for group, group level aggregation none, first group and let's just have the first group enabled here and let's keep that the way it is and hit next. Let's show 25 records per page once again we're gonna hit next and for right now we can either enable a details page or disable it. Let's go ahead and disable the details page and hit finish and here's our, our fifth data page. We're gonna deploy this enable access, grab the code once again, go to our builder and access our view orders web page. Paste the code, save our changes, publish it. Okay, so now I have the ability to search based on my customer information. I can see the results and as you can see I'm grouping based on month and what you're seeing here is the customer's name, we're seeing the product name, the cost, the quantity, and this gives me a grand total here, so this, this amount times this amount gives me this, and I see a grand total at the bottom, uh, which gives me a nice distribution and shows me the metrics in terms of month of March, who had what revenue, and who purchased how many items. Now there are plenty of ways to customize these reports, like I mentioned throughout the class, um, if you have some specific type of calculations that you need to perform in your reports, Caspio is very, very flexible. I'm not going to give you an example, but I just wanted to show you here that if you are technical and if you understand SQL statements inside these fields, you can actually add SQL where you're grabbing information from different tables to perform even a more complex and uh, compl uh, compl more complicated uh, calculation. So to finish everything off we're gonna build one last data page here which is the pivot table that shows me uh, the revenue based on the product. So we're gonna build one last data page and let's go to reports once again and we're gonna select our pivot table and the pivot table is simply going to be based on the uh, orders table once again because that's where all the information is. And we're going to go ahead and give this a name. Let's call it View um, or View Revenue Based on Product. Once again, you can have a search form if you'd like. Let's not build a search form this time. Let's just filter our data. Okay, we're going to hit Next. And on this screen, do you want to have any of your filtering fields included? Uh, let's not include any filtering fields. Let's just show all the records. And just like in Excel, you're now going to see this wizard to modify your pivot table on what you want to see. Um, I've actually used the wrong data source, so it's a good thing that I caught myself here. Let's go back. And what I need to use is the actual view that we just constructed because that view shows me all the information. So you have to select that. So let's go back to the configuration screen. So in the column section, what I want to see across the top, I would like to be able to see the month. So we need to go to the date ordered. Okay, and then once again, we want to group this based on month. In my rows, I want to show the product information, so the product name. So let's find the product name. And finally, here we want to include a total and aggregation. So I have a calculated field, and we're going to set this up the same way as before. So we're simply going to say total, and I want to include both of my cost of the product times the quantity ordered. Okay, uh, and let's take a look to see if there's anything else that needs to be done here. So we have the sum, we have just basically this calculation that I want to see, and let's format this as a currency, as before. And when you're done, you can click on Finish. And let's go ahead and deploy our very last data page here. So we're going to simply copy our code, 
go to order summary and just like I've done a couple of other times in the past we're gonna just grab our code publish our web page and let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have and there we have it so now you can see all of the products on the left hand side we have the months on the top and we have the grand total here in the middle uh, that shows me the summation uh, of all of the products and the revenue of course if you had multiple months here you will be able to see them across the top and then if you sold multiple products you will be able to see them here on the left hand side now um, one last thing that I wanted to show you here just to complete the whole application is to have a way to pass or protect our application because as of right now if I, if I share this link with somebody all of these data pages are going to be public facing meaning they're not password protected okay and if you're putting your access application online one of the most important things if it's internal for internal purposes you want to somehow authenticate that using a login screen so let me show you in Caspio how to quickly accomplish that I'm going to go to my tables object and really quickly create a new table from scratch here and this table is going to contain all of the credentials for all of my internal employees that need to log in and view the data so I'm simply going to have the employee name I want the employees to log in using their email so I'm going to turn this into a unique field because you can only have one email per employee you can't have the same email twice inside this table and finally let's have a password field and we're going to turn that into a password type now in Caspia you can have multi-user level roles so you can have managers you can have admins employees but just to speed up on time I'm just gonna create one user group here we're gonna save our table and let's give this a name we're gonna call it users and inside my users table I'm going to list just some demo information here so let's just have John Doe John at test.com and password can be test if you have other users that need to log into the application you can list them here inside this table another nice thing about Caspio is that you can have unlimited users logging into your applications so once you have your table set up you're now going to go to the authentications object and to set up the authentication you're gonna click on new and now from this drop down for data source you're gonna select your users table because that's where all the credentials reside we're gonna use the custom setup option and Caspio is gonna give you four ways on how you can validate your data so you can use the data source which is the table that we have you can use ID services so if you want users to log in using Facebook Gmail or maybe an open ID account like Facebook or Twitter you can use a combination of both of them and SAML which is not available on the trial account but if you have single sign-on through an active directory for example uh, which is a way to log into Windows and you want to use the same credentials to log into the Caspio application we have this feature available as well so today we're gonna use recommended we're gonna use the uh, email and password as our two credential fields click on create and let's give this a name we're gonna call it user authentication okay and once you have this object created you can now easily apply that object to any data page that you wish to pass or protect now I want to pass or protect all six of my data pages so I'm just gonna go through each one of them click on edit and really quickly just make these adjustments so access and security you're gonna enable the checkbox and you're going to now apply that authentication that you just created using this object here so hit finish so the only data page that I'm password protecting so far is my add new customer form so if we go back to our web page and if we go to add new customer you're gonna see that login screen now on your application but if I go to add new product I don't have that password screen enabled yet so what I need to do is go through each one of my data pages and really quickly enable that checkbox so to speed up on time I have already enabled the authentication across all of my data pages by clicking on edit 
And now when we go back to our website, what you're going to see when you refresh is all of your data pages are now password protected. And in this example, the only person that has access to this application is John Doe. Of course, you can always go to your table and add additional users that you wish to grant access to the application. I uh, truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. Um, you know, we went through uh, taking an existing local access database application and using Caspio and Weebly, we were able to recreate all of that functionality and have the application accessible via the web. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us directly by giving us a call. Or if you'd like to see some more in-depth tutorials and videos on how to use Caspio, you can always visit our knowledge base at howto.caspio.com. Thanks so much for your time. If you liked the video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for any of the latest videos, tips and tricks on how to use Caspio for your projects. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day. Bye-bye.